Let's keep talking about Article 220, Branch Circuit Feeder Service Calculations. We're going to talk about 220.53, Appliances and Dwelling Units. This is the 75% demand factor requirement, or allowance, I should say. So the 75% demand factor for dwelling unit appliances no longer includes electric vehicle supply equipment. This is the first time we're talking about EVSE in this video series, Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment. Now listen, I'm going to screw up and say Vehicle Charger because you know, <laughs> it's just what I call them. The actual charger is in the car. Okay, we, we, so we have electric vehicle supply equipment, all right? The charger is part of the vehicle. But I know I'm going to screw that up, so just, you know, bear with me. You, you guys know what I'm talking about. So the 75% demand factor thing. A demand factor of 75% can be applied to the nameplate ratings of four or more appliances that are fastened in place, rated five, 500 watts, or a quarter horsepower or more that are on the same feeder or service. All right, so... This is something that seems strange when you first start getting into load calculations because it's like, okay, the more appliances I have, the lower the demand, the lower the calculation. Well, <laughs> the more appliances you have, the less likely it is that you'll be using them all at the same time, right? If you have one or two appliances or maybe three appliances, you could use them all at the same time. But if you have six appliances, you're not going to be using them all at the same time. When's the last time that you were using your water heater and your dishwasher and your garbage disposal and your garage door opener, right, all at the same time? You're not, okay? So we can apply a 75% demand factor, but that does not include every single appliance in the house. It does not include household cooking equipment that's fastened in place. Listen, we already give you a massive demand factor for the range, all right? You go to table 220.55, 8KW, the whole ball of wax, right? So we already have a demand factor in place for the range. We're not going to let you double dip. Same thing with clothes dryers. 220.54 recognizes that, you know, your, your clothes dryer is going to have a demand factor. So we don't use that in the 75% demand. Space heating equipment. Look, if it's cold, you're probably going to have every heater in the house, you know, going at the same time. So you don't get a demand factor on that. Remember, the demand factor is the idea that you're not using everything all at the same time at 100% of its maximum rating. Well, you could be doing that for space heating equipment, right, depending on where you live. So you live in Montana, where my brother is, you're going to have every heater in the building fired up at 100%, and, and you'd wish it could turn up to 11 Air conditioning equipment. Well, same idea, but just on the other end of the spectrum. If you're in Phoenix or Vegas, yeah, your air conditioning is going to be on all day, every day. It's never going to turn off, right, other than just the, the regular cycling that it does. So you can't double dip on the air conditioner. New to the 2023, we do not get to use that 75% demand factor for electric vehicle supply equipment either. So your car charger. Um, you know, it, it really depends on the type of charger that you have. Um, if you have a one of the big chargers, those things can drop to 60 or 80 amps. If you have one of the small ones, you know, maybe it's only 15 amps. But the small one, you're going to plug it in and it, it's going to take you all night to charge your vehicle. If it's one of the bigger ones, yeah, you may be able to charge your car in an hour or a couple of hours. I don't know what it is. But you're also pulling 60 or you're pulling more current in your garage than you are for the rest of the entire house, including your air conditioner, right? So we're not going to let you use the car charger as part of the 75% demand factor. Now, there is some relief that we're going to talk about when it comes to electric vehicle supply equipment because we have to, you know, I mean, look, man, it, it doesn't matter whether you love electric vehicles or hate electric vehicles. You're part of the electrical industry. You have to understand the requirements for them. You have to understand how they work, what we have to do. I mean, listen, they're not going away. All right, it, It's not a fad. They're, they're going to be here a while. So we need to understand exactly what we have to do for electric vehicle supply equipment. So starting here, we're saying, listen, if it's in a dwelling, you don't get to take the 75% demand factor for electric vehicle supply equipment. But we're not finished talking about load calculations for electric vehicle supply. Finally, we're talking about them in Article 220. This is not the only place that we're going to be talking about them. All right, see you on the next video.